Hey everybody, this is Scott Joseph. We are at NADA JNL Marketing, booth 3266C. We've got a very special guest. Most of you probably know him, Chase Frazier. Hello everybody. All right, and so I wanted to talk to him because we've got a fund. We do. You're looking for disruptors, all right? You're looking for people that are gonna come in here and make a big splash. Uh, I'll let you go into detail of that, and I think then it makes sense where I think a lot of people that are watching will get a lot out of this. So give us a quick background. Yeah, we uh, we manage $160 million, so uh, it's a venture, venture fund. Yeah. We're only investing in automotive tech. So at, at NADA, there's some really interesting companies on this floor. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of really interesting companies that aren't on this floor. You know, we, we find uh, it's the guys that actually can't afford to have booths here. Yeah. That that those are the guys we 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 want to invest in. We are raising our uh, third fund right now. Okay. We had an initial close actually uh, on Friday. Nice. So this will end up being a hundred million dollars. Oh so, wow. Uh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, and really most of our investors are here. These are these are guys that I'm an are, investor, by the way. Yeah, right, actually. <laughs> literally here. But yeah. uh, ninety five percent of the guys that are investing with you. Yeah. They're they're automotive people. They're guys that understand what's going on in the industry. They want to be close to the the disruption. Yeah. It's it's a good niche. Sure. So when you're looking the one of the reasons I think uh, that we can be valuable uh, add value uh, valuable content to the people that are watching is this. When you're looking, you are looking for someone that's got huge potential. So yeah. what are the things you're looking for that you see potentially could have a huge impact in the future? Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is a huge learning for us is that in the beginning it was 80% about the idea. I, I, somebody would come in and pitch me and I'd just get so pumped up about this brilliant idea. And we didn't do real well with some of those. And it wasn't the idea, it was the guy. Because what ends up happening is, is it these things fail, and they fail like four times. Yeah. I mean, there's always some problem. So we're more focused, you know, it used to be 80% idea, 20% team. Yep. Now in team, the, the main guy, our gal. And now it's 80% that person. Yeah. Like, we need somebody when it really gets bad, because it's going to get bad. Yes, it is. We need somebody who's going to be able to like, okay, that didn't work. That marketing didn't work. The our, 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 Where we were going didn't work. Let's let's change gears. So what do you see in a person when you're looking at this and you're focusing in, is this the right guy that we want to partner up or invest in? What are the things you're looking at? It like, sounds like a job interview almost. It, you know, the number one is exits. Has that guy or gal made money? Okay. Now, I won't yeah. name names, but we've done a deal recently where the, the guy we invested in, he had had a $350 million exit, yeah. a $500 million exit. So he's already checked so many of the boxes. Right. I go, okay, what are you doing now? And it's, I don't want to say it's a short conversation. We still do our due diligence. Right. But mentally, I'm like, okay, I know what I've got here. Yeah. And it's easier for us to, to make that investment. Yeah. And so, what are you looking at for in terms of behaviors? What I mean by that from the person is not personality, but virtues, behaviors. Like, what what, is, what, has to, what do you have to see there? Uh, overwhelming positivity. Like, the, the guy, I, I call it getting out of bed in the morning with your hair on fire. Like, yeah. he, his feet hit the ground, and he's ready to just go get it. So one it's, of the, it's a lot like a dealer. Think about what, what is a successful dealer. Great point. That dealer gets out of bed in the morning and he's like, "Okay, what what are we what are we selling today? What 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 are we what are we moving through this dealership?" Yeah. Those are the good ones, really. If you think about it. Well, when you when I look at business leaders, I sit there. Plenty of them are passionate about their product, but that's not that only goes so far. You got to be passionate about the process to get it done. Yeah, and you got to be passionate about your people. Yes. So, if, in order of, I got this. I got this really positive hair on fire CEO, but he also understands where he's weak. That's that's a big deal. And a lot of those spots. Yeah, a lot of those guys are not very self aware. Right. And so they they think they're a little bit jack of all trades. Yep. Yeah. The guy I love is had exits, really, really a positive go getter. But he understands that he's good at three to five things. Yeah. Really, he or she. And that they're going to find people around them. They're gonna bolster their weaknesses. That's the key. In the end, we failed with that really dynamic CEO, right? Because he had a bad team. Gotcha. Let's talk. Let's switch gears. Let's yeah. talk. 
what are the products, what are the services, automotive, what's on the horizon in terms of, if you're looking for things that disrupt, once you find the right people, you still have to buy into the concept of the, of the business plan and the sure. strategy, right? The vision of that. Sure. What is on the horizon here that you're really looking at and you, you feel is coming down the pike? I, I, a number of things. I, I think what's happened recently is the, the online buying purchase, like truly soup to nuts, buy a vehicle online. Yep. I mean, you and I have talked about it for 15 years. That's and right. It's been very theoretical. There's some companies out there that are like an inch away Correct. from doing it. Challenge with it, getting lenders lined up. You have some state laws. State laws, is a, that's a big problem. <laughs> yeah. And it's really expensive, yep. state regulation, to, to get through all that. Yep. But Tesla did it. Yep. And sure. they've figured out a way to, to do that purchase, and it's 30 minutes, 45 minutes. I mean, it's pretty streamlined. Yeah. So we look at it, and I think the OEMs look at it and go, okay, we're not trying to just intermediate the dealer, but we need a pro there's, there's some subset of buyers that want that. My wife may not want to go to the store, yeah. but she may want to sit online and like have that process, yeah. map it out. Now, the challenge with all that is you've got to deliver the vehicle. And, and so I, I think there's two things going on. What does the software platform look like? And then there's this logistical piece. How do I deliver that vehicle to that person's house and how do I do it in a way that, that is really classy? Yeah. But the big one is how do I lose, how do I not lose that F&I revenue, right? Yep. So I think the future is probably an outsource, this is way, I'm, I'm way in advance here, yeah. but probably outsource F&I for those folks. So they show up at your house. Yeah. It's a it's an Apple like experience where it's not that hardcore F and I manager right. that's selling pretty hard. Right. It's an iPad, menus, here's what we think's going on. It's an interesting approach, yeah. yeah. I like that. Not for everybody. No. But for some subset. Not for everybody yet. Not for everybody yet. Yeah. We're in Vrome, uh, one of one of our investments and I think if you interviewed those folks, they like they like the buying process, but what they really like is the delivery. Yeah. Car shows up, comes off the trailer, really professional, really nice, really really transaction friendly. Yeah. So that's that's the delivery of the vehicle is going to be a big deal for the dealer moving forward. What about let's let's switch to fixed stops. What are you seeing there? Uh, a couple of things. Um, we've got a company where. We're doing price optimization. Okay. So you think about fixed ops, they've got they got their menu of prices and it really hadn't changed. I mean maybe there's been some price increases over the years, but it hadn't changed much. Think about airlines. Airlines prices move. Yep. Think about other industries that are web based. We don't know this, but there's really smart AI behind the scenes that's manipulating price yep. based on really good data. We think that's a really nice way at a dealership to to, to tweak that, the, the cost. And what we're finding with these dealers that are going through the system, they're seeing five, 10% increases in, in, in RO yeah. revenue. So just price optimization on, on the back end. Yeah, I like that. Uh, the other one is uh, service loaners. It's a, it's a nightmare, just in general. Right. You know, I mean, you're a dealer. Yep. So you know that 10 years ago, that wasn't a big line item for you. You're going back and forth on how to do it. You're never, right. never happy with any direction. You need good software to yeah. manage the service loaner program and do it in a way where it's not crippled. Yeah. You don't want that thing to end up being this huge cost center to a dealer, which is what it is today. See, I think service is the biggest opportunity for dealers. Oh, for sure. There's so much they're not getting that other companies have basically cherry-picked and uh, the independent repair shops have just cherry picked and said, this is where the profit is. We're going to build our entire business just around this. National Change, Jiffy Lube, Valvoline. If you do a, a typical search, oil change near me on a website, you can't find a dealer on that page with a search warrant. You know, so it's, it's all, all the national change. And, and by the way, those guys are throwing tens of millions of dollars, sometimes hundred million plus dollars a year 75% of it's all on digital right. marketing. Uh, dealers can't compete with that unless they're able to outsmart that. There's ways to do it, but they still haven't gotten in there yet. The only thing good about the 2008 downturn is the good dealers got good at fixed ops. Yeah. And so if you look today, they're, they're doing a better job in the yep. back end. 
piggybacking on what you just talked about. I think the dealer of the future, what does that footprint look like? Yeah. It's a pretty small showroom. I, I yes. don't, you know, a huge inventory of vehicles. Floor, floor plans are like, you can't have margins like this with fixed or with fixed cost and overhead for these huge footprints and stores sure. and had to build these museums like that. That's not where the profit is. The profit's going to be in the back. Right, and you're going to have 100 base. You're going to have 150 base. Correct. You're going to be a really, really sophisticated pebble. The problem with all these independent guys right now, cars are getting way too sophisticated yep. to fix. And so Joe's garage is going to have real trouble staying in the game. The, the tool the tool kits are way too expensive, but just LiDAR and radar and the complication of these engines and yep. the complication of the vehicle. All the, these computers. I think the dealers in the next 10 years have to do a great job on fixed ops, and especially in the sense of they're not tapping into their advantages. So it's very rare that the dealer, it's going to sound horrible, but personnel issues at a dealership, that's usually a negative in comparing to other industries. But not to the people that are they're stealing their lunch money, these independent repair shops. Dealers have a huge advantage because overall they have better people than oh, those people. Way and, better. And so that, if they start focusing in on where the money is, brakes, tires, batteries, and not let this, and, and outsmart from a marketing standpoint, uh, they have so many advantages over those independent shops, but they don't, they're just allowing it to get taken. And you hit on some tires. I mean, dealers still are really pretty yeah. terrible at selling tires. And they, maybe the margin's a little skinnier, but it's a great place to get you get the vehicle up. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just a way to build that relationship. Yeah. So, I don't, that's what I, you know, I, I sit there and I, I, I would focus all my time and energy, not all of it, but a lot of my up. time and on the fixed side. Yeah. The yeah, margins it's are there. The, that's the other thing. Your margins are better. And if you think about the tech, you know, going back to where we invest, there's just, again, we're in this hall, you know, 80% yeah. of this hall is about selling vehicles and, and, and You're 100%. slinging metal. Yeah, well, look at a dealer's ad spend. We talk about, they all think fixed ops is important, but when you look at their ad budget, less than 10% goes to fixed ops. Right. But the general manager still doesn't, in most cases, understand the, 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 the back. So what do you think all these people do? Probably most of the companies you're looking at. They're going to go to the low-hanging fruit. If all the GMs are want to think front-end, 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 right. Everything being built to support the dealers, the majority of the time is on the front end from a marketing standpoint because it's what the dealer wants to talk about. Right. <laughs> I, I, so it's I, like this circle of, you know. Well, it's good to hear you preach that because you're obviously doing that with your clients, and that's yeah. good. I mean, fixed stops is the place to be. Yeah. Without a doubt. So, but uh, all right. So tell us a little bit. Uh, so you just closed the third. Well, it's the initial close. So the way that right. process works is you get millions of dollars in in this close and then well, I just got my first check on the one I invested in right so, and I'm loving it he did we, yeah. we sold a we sold a deal in uh, based in Germany so yep. we're doing a lot of international stuff love Israeli entrepreneurs love that these that, that guy in Germany that we sold that company it, it's a it's a good one yeah what I find about a lot of these international deals is that we we this room kind of set the tone yeah from a technology standpoint and I find that these other countries are five years behind us, maybe even 10, okay. the, the dealer tech. But what's nice is the true car model worked here, it'll work in other places. Yep. The Viato worked here, it'll work in other places. Any concept that works can usually be applied to something and it'll, and it'll produce the same results. There are nuances to the, the, the people buying the car in China versus Brazil versus... Right. We actually did an event yesterday morning and had 25 Brazilian dealers up. Had a Portuguese interpreter and going through the whole deal, so it's, it was a different environment. But they're hungry. They're hungry for what's what's next and how they can learn from what a lot of what we do here in the states. So let's talk a little bit State of the Union type stuff. You're talking to all these companies. What are they saying? What, what, what's keeping them up at night? What are they excited about? And companies you're talking about the startups. Just either the startups because you're talking to business leaders in this hall that aren't startups too. So some of these companies probably, like us, probably are investing in your funds. Sure, yeah. All right, so what are they excited about? What are they worried about? 
I mean, right. without saying the, names. the obvious, we, we've been running so hard as an industry for so many years that yeah. you know everybody's waiting for SAR to, to drop. Yeah. You know, at, at a broader in a broader sense, I mean, we're we're doing some investments in autonomy. We're doing some investments in connected car. Yeah. And I can talk about some of those companies, but I guess I guess that's the the fear. The fear is the fear is the unknown, right? And it's it's human nature. Like you, you, if you don't know what's next, then you're going to be fearful of what's next. Here's here's a bit of a, a positive comment, though. There's nobody scrappier, and there's nobody better at figuring out how to make money than dealer. Yeah. Right. I agree. So all this like, it's the end of the world dealer talk. It's just it's crazy. Yeah. And we can all we can all take the bait and act like it's the end of the world. The good dealers, those guys are going to make more money. That's right. Because they're going to figure out how to. They're going to find the niches. They're going to figure out how to change. They're going to figure out how to how to repair autonomous vehicles. Yeah. They're going to figure out. Okay. Well. Well, the vehicles are going to have a lot less parts, moving parts, right. and so those are going to become simpler too. So yeah, you got to. The tires are always going to be there. Well, you're going to run a lot of tires off autonomous vehicles and, yep. and shared vehicles. That's right. What about just light maintenance? That's you know, right. Good dealers are going to get into light maintenance. Yeah. They're going to recon. I, we love recon. Yeah. Recon's really interesting, right? Yeah. I don't think dealers are very good at recon. That's right. And so, how do you how do well, you? Well, they got the new company that will just right. launch with Recon Velocity, yeah. right? Yeah. So you've got a, over there. You've got a proven entrepreneur yep. who had a big big exit to CDK. That's right. We, you know, those are those are places we like to look. Yeah. Guys that know how to do it. Are you looking at them? We're, I'm going to have a conversation. <laughs> so, I, yeah, yeah. not not officially yet, but that's that's. Probably when I leave here, I'm, I'm walking by their booth. <laughs> good, so, yeah. yeah so there's a good buzz with them right now. I feel sure. like, yeah. Sure. So, all right. Yeah, it's it's. We all, as an industry, got to stop with the fear thing. You know, we've got to we got to focus on what we're good at. We're, we're good at making money. We're good at selling things. That's uh, right. The best. Let's the do. The industry's that. come a, a long way, and just the customer experience stuff, treating customers right. I don't know if the perception and the consumers there yet, but I can tell you that. It, Dealers genuinely care about all that, and I think they've made great strides, you know, over the last. In my 29 years of doing this, uh, it's night and day. And it's going to get better. You're, You're right. right. It's way better than it was. It'll it'll continue to yeah. improve for sure. I agree. Chase Frazier, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, man. All right. We'll see you.